Hey guys, and welcome to the Cinema 40 tutorial. In this lesson, we're going to be going over some Expresso, some math, and we're going to be hooking that up into the MoGraph cloner object. And what we're going to be creating is a conveyor belt system, or I suppose uh, it could also be used to create tank tracks, like something maybe on a bulldozer or an army tank. Now, back in the old days of R8, and I believe the beginning stages of R9, we didn't have the MoGraph module, which meant that we didn't have any of this stuff here. But thankfully, we do have it now, which is going to make this a whole lot easier. But back in the old days, we had to do it the hard way, and there was a lot of espresso involved in order to get it to work right. So let's go ahead and put something together very simple. So I'm going to create a cloner, a cube, and I'm going to create a rectangle spline. And I'm just going to make this elongated, make it editable, select the points, and then we're going to use the chamfer tool here, hit apply, and if you have real-time update enabled, you can just do this live in the viewport by changing the radius parameter. And we just want to go all the way until it is rounded out on both ends. So now we want to take the cube, drop it in as a child of the cloner, and we want to change the cloner parameter mode from linear to object, and we want to tell it to clone these around the spline. So we need to drag the spline into the object link box. Now there are a few things here that's going to need to be changed. So let's change the distribution mode to even and we need to change the size of the cube. And this is totally dependent upon what you want your tank track system to look like or your conveyor belt system. Go back to the cloner. Take this up. Now be careful with this count that you don't go too far because you can risk getting some intersecting cubes. We don't want that to happen so I go up one more, you can see we're getting some intersecting stuff there. So let's just drop this down to 23 and we'll leave it there. That'll work for fine. Uh, that'll work for this example. All right, so let's also enable smooth rotation. And then all we have to do is keyframe this offset parameter. And that's pretty much how you do your tank tracks. But in the real world, tank tracks have wheels. You notice there are no wheels in the middle of this, so let's create a wheel. And this is where we're going to get into the Espresso. So let's create a cylinder, change the orientation, and we need to push this over. Now the problem is that we need to line this up to where it's going to be the same size and line up with the outside rounded corner here, or the side that's been rounded of our rectangle spline. So I'm going to scale this up until the bottom of the cylinder and the top of the cylinder hit that spline. So right about there I think will be okay. And then we just want to take it and pull it over until it lines up. And you can see uh, the spline here is black and since we have our cylinder highlighted it's white so we just need to push it over until the two intersect like that but you can see that the cylinder is intersecting with the cube. So we just need to scale it down now. So something about there I think will be okay. So we'll go ahead and make that editable. We need to optimize it before we start messing around with the polygons. And I'm just gonna make a couple extrusions. Nothing too fancy, just to add a little depth to it. All right, so I think something like that will be all right. And let's select these outside polys, but I'm just going to go two, skip two, and then select another two. All right, and then we want to just extrude those out. 
Okay, so there is our will. And let me turn on ground shading with lines so we can see it a little better. And I'm just gonna pull all of this up above the grid. Technically I could turn the grid off, but we'll just pull it up above the grid. All right, now if we were to take the cloner object and animate the offset parameter, the track system is moving, but notice that the will is not moving. So the question is, how do we get this will to move and be in proper synchronization with this track system? Or, you know, it could be a conveyor belt, either one will work. But how do we get this will to, you know, to be in synchronization with the track? Because we could take the cylinder and we could animate, I, I think it's probably going to be the B parameter here for the banking. Yeah, so we could just animate that but I don't think people realize just how hard that's going to be in order to animate this to line up to look right with the track moving. So animating that by hand, that is not the way to do it. So then how do we do this? Because I want one controller that's going to animate everything. And I want to be able to go forward and reverse. I just don't want forward speed or reverse. I want both. And I only want to do it with one controller. I don't want to have to animate multiple properties. So this is where Expresso comes in. Now before we start, uh, rather than use the actual cylinder, which I'm going to call wheel, I'm gonna take our, rec our uh, rectangle spline here and I'm gonna rename it to track path. Rather than animate the actual wheel, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a spline and it's gonna act as the driver. Think of it as a proxy object. So rather than animating the wheel, we're just going to animate a spline and then we'll just make the wheel a child of the spline and it will follow. So with the wheel selected, we want to go over and hold down to bring up the drop down menu for the splines. I'm going to hold down Alt and click on Circle Spline. And when we do that, it makes the object that we selected, which was the Circle Spline, appear in the position of the object that was selected, which was the wheel but you can see that it also makes it the parent. So we just need to drag the wheel out. So we need to take this circle spline and we want to scale it down. And what we want to do is we want to scale this down to where it's the size of the track path spline. So I want to scale it down until it intersects with the outside. You can see it's intersecting there with the outside of that track path spline. Okay, now we can go back and drag the wheel in. Now we can take the spline and we can rotate the spline and you can see the wheel is moving with it. So let's rename the circle to driver spline. And we want to add an Espresso tag to it. So right click on it, Cinema 4D Tags, Espresso. This is going to open up the Espresso window and we want to take the driver spline and drag it in. And we also want to take the track path spline and drag it in as well. Now what we want to do, because we're going to be getting into a little math here, is we want to get the length value from both of these splines. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to need a spline node. So right click, new node, Espresso, general, and spline but we're going to need two of them, one for each spline. So we're going to control click down just to make a copy. And we need the output port on both of these uh, spline nodes here for the track path and the driver spline to be object. So we'll connect object to object on both of these. And the output port over here is position. We just need to go ahead and delete that because we don't want position, we want length. So we'll get the link for both of those. And now we need to get a math node. So we'll go to calculate math and we need to change the a function to divide. All right, so what we're doing here is we're taking the length of the track path spline, goes into the first input, and the length of the driver spline goes into the second input. And we're dividing the track path spline length by the driver spline length. And that's going to give us an output. But the thing is, we can't just run this 
right over to the cloner object because so far there's nothing here giving us the B rotation value and so this Expresso setup right now has no idea what's going to be driving the whole system. So we need to take the driver spline and drag that in and on the output we need to go down to coordinates, rotation, rotation B. Now we're also going to need one more math node set to divide so we might as well just go ahead and click this one and control click and drag over to duplicate it. And we want to take the rotation B from the driver spline, hook it up to the first input, and then this information coming from the two splines being divided, this needs to be brought into this one as the second input. And we can't just run this information directly into the cloner right now because the cloner object, if you remember, what's driving the actual tracks to move around is the offset parameter but notice that this parameter is in percentage value and since we introduced the B rotation value here from the driver spline this is not given us a percentage it's given us rotation or degrees well actually it's not degrees it's actually radians so we need to convert radians into percentages so how do we do that well we do it with a range mapper so new node expresso calculate range mapper and on the input side we know the information coming from this divide node is going to be in radians so we'll set the input range to radians and the output we want it converted into percentage so the output range is going to be percent we'll hook that up and then we need to take our cloner object and drag that in and for the input we want to go to object properties offset and then hook that up there. Now we can take the driver spline and let's see what happens if we uh, animate this B rotation value. Okay, so it's working, but you can see it's reversed. So there's a quick way to fix that. Uh, we just need to take this wheel, drag it out for a moment, take this driver spline and rotate it 180 degrees, drag the wheel back in, now animate this property again and now everything is in line and we can actually go to the front view here and let's change the shading mode so we can see this a little better and let's animate this again and let's see if everything sticks and everything does appear to be sticking everything looks good doesn't look like we have any slipping that looks pretty good so that's how you do that. So there is our conveyor belt system or a tank track wheel. And all we're having to do is use the driver spline uh, B rotational value, and that's driving everything for us. So what happens if you want to add an additional wheel? Because notice we've only got one here, and there should be another one at the back. Well, technically, we don't really have to do much espresso because this front wheel is driving the track system. We don't need another wheel driving it. So let's take this driver spline and duplicate it down. We can delete the Expresso tag off of it because we don't need it. And notice that uh, the rotation is kind of offset a little bit. We want to zero that out. So zero out the B rotation and then push this over to where, again, this spline is going to line up with the track path spline. All right, now, so far, if we were to animate the main one, the back one isn't going to spin. So we need to go back into the Expresso. But before we do, I want to create a user data controller in order to control this rather than having to click on the driver spline and animate that B rotational value. So with the driver spline selected, we want to go to user data, add user data. And for this, you can make your user interface whatever you want, but I'm just going to use a user data slider. So we're going to keep it float, and the interface is going to be a float slider, which looks like this here. And we just want to call this track speed. Uh, we don't want it to be in percent value. We want to change this to 
Uh, let's try real. Okay, and notice that it starts at zero, which is the left hand part of the slider, and all the way up to the right is 1000, and we don't want that because zero means off, and anything in the plus direction means it's going forward. But remember I said I want to have reverse in case I need to reverse this uh, track conveyor belt system here. So the minimum I'm going to take to negative 50, which you can make this whatever you want. And then for the maximum, I'm going to make that 50. And then we'll click OK. So now it's set in the middle, which is zero. And anything this way is negative, and this is positive. All right, so we'll open up the Expresso again. And we need to go over to the left-hand side. And we're going to take the driver's line, and we're going to drag this in. And we're going to go down here to user data track speed. And we want to get a time node. So Espresso general time. And we want to change that port over to real. And we want to get a math node. Because we want to multiply these two. So we'll go to calculate math. We need to change it to multiply. And we're going to hook up these two parameters. So we're taking the time, which is real. We're multiplying it by whatever the track speed value is. Right now it's set to zero. And we're going to output that. But we're not going to output it to the track path. We're going to output it to the driver's line. So in the input side, we're going to go to coordinates, rotation, B. Now we can connect this over to the B rotational value. And now we can select the user data if we hit play, which I need to add some more time to the timeline. Now if we hit play, nothing is happening, but we'll take these values up. And now we're controlling them. And you can also go in reverse as well. So we'll leave it at a speed of 3. But notice that back wheel is still not turning. So when you go back into the Expresso, We'll take our driver spline one, which was the duplicate. We'll drag it in. And we're going to do the same for here. We're going to take this output over to the rotation B. Hit play. And now it's working. So let's go back over to our controller. And you can see everything is working properly. Forward speed and reverse speed. And technically, if you wanted to add a third wheel, all you have to do is create a third one. Drag it over to the middle somewhere. Go back into the Espresso, and then just drag in that third wheel. Make sure to get the B rotational value here, like the other ones. And that's all you have to do. All right, so let's go over the Espresso one more time in case anybody's having trouble understanding it. What we've got here is two splines, the track path spline and the driver spline. And we're using the spline nodes to get the length value from both of these. We're then taking that information and we're dividing it. We're then outputting that value and dividing it by the rotational value or the rotational uh, information coming out of the driver spline. That information is then being converted from radians into percentage, and then that is being piped into the cloner object. And then we're just using a simple time setup here uh, with our user data controller in order to control how fast or how slow it's going forward and reverse. All right, so I think that pretty much wraps up this tutorial. There's a lot of different variations and applications that this can be used for, like I said, a conveyor belt system some type of track system like on an army tank or a bulldozer or you know there's just uh, a lot of different ways this can be used but I think this covers the basis on how to set this up so I think I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up if you have any questions feel free to comment below and as always guys thank you for watching and I will see you in the next tutorial